tax problem, what, what are sort of some of the criteria I'm thinking about? So in that sense, it's sort of the economics 101. And basically what we, we tend to do is, in economics, and this will be part of sort of just talking about the vocabulary, is we tend to think about things in terms of efficiency and equity. Uh, and then for, for, for these particular issues, there's, there's a couple of other criteria I'll, I'll, I'll jump onto. So you can go. And so I'll have three slides, one on efficiency, one on equity, and one on everything else. So when we talk about efficiency, what we, what we really worry about is when a tax creates distorting behavior, when it creates sort of avoidance behavior that doesn't generate revenue but imposes costs on people. So for income taxes, we worry about income taxes distorting when people would retire or when a second earner enters or leaves the, uh, the labor force. And for property taxes, what originally, uh, sort of there was, there was a long advocacy of land taxes, uh, we also worry about distortions. And one potential distortion is if you have different rates in different communities, you might people make this, see people making long commutes between where they work and where they live, right? And that this is a, a impact on our economy that's, that's artificial, that's created by the tax system. It has real costs and doesn't raise revenue that part uh, because people are using that to, to avoid the, the, the property tax. So when do taxes have less distortions in general? Well, taxes that are broad-based, that are hard to avoid, taxes that are geographically similar, so it's hard to avoid by, by going to another place, uh, and things that are fixed supply. So normally the property tax doesn't get, get quite as, as, as much attention on the efficiency side as other kinds of taxes because it meets two of those criteria, and in other parts of the, of the country it meets the third criteria where you don't have quite the dramatic variation we have in New Hampshire. But in New Hampshire, we want to worry about efficiency precisely because we have such big uh, variation across, uh, across municipalities and tax rates. Uh, other you know, forms of efficiency, administration costs, I think Richard will mention <coughs> that. Uh, and I'll leave to Richard, they're, they're, uh, they're, I, I think the property tax event, uh, uh, can affect our development patterns. And Richard has done some, some work on that, and I think he will talk a little bit about that. So when we talk about equity, what, we, what we're normally thinking about is sort of uh, uh, progressivity or regressivity of the tax, but actually for economists there's, there's two pieces of this. One is horizontal equity, which says do similar people get taxed in similar ways? And the, the, the thought experiment I always do here is to say, well, imagine you have two brothers who both retire, they have similar incomes, and one of them decides he wants to travel a lot, buys a small house, uh, uh, and, and keeps his, 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 his assets fairly liquid in, in stocks and bonds and, and, and uses the money to travel. And the other brother decides that uh, doesn't want to travel so much, wants to have a nice house, fixes up his house or has a bigger house, uh, and you know, uh, uh, has, a, has a more valuable property. Well, those two individuals we've treated very differently, right? And there's no sort of economic reason that uh, we, we would necessarily want to favor one or the other. Well, maybe they're... <clears throat> I'm not convinced there is. Uh, and this is an issue. Now, this, this is going to be an even more complicated issue when we, when we think about how this interacts with, with you know, we, we all know we don't just pay taxes to the state and locality, but to the federal government as well. And there's some preferences at the federal level for uh, uh, property taxation. But there's that, that, that horizontal equity in terms of why are homeowners treated differently than, than people who own other kinds of assets. Uh, and the other piece is vertical equity. And, and I, I kind of am careful on this because in, in economic classes, we know this involves judgment. But vertical equity is this idea that, that we, we generally think that taxes should be somewhat progressive or uh, uh, tax burdens should be paid according to ability to pay. Uh, and the, the research on this argues that property taxes are, are, are proportional at best, but probably regressive. In other words, property taxes in the studies I've seen seem to be reflected in rents for renters. So even, even people who rent end up paying their property tax. And poor people pay a larger percentage of their income towards housing than relatively wealthy people. And if you have a proportional tax, but it's eating up a bigger proportion of your income, then you, it, it's a regressive tax, right? It's, it's, it's 
it's taking a, a bigger chunk out of a, a relatively poor person's income than out of a relatively wealthy person's income. So the concern on the on the vertical equity is that uh, property taxes may may well be regressive uh, and are best or close proportional. Uh, and then when designing tax systems, you want to think about how it, how it relates in with the, with the broader federal tax. Uh, and here, the, the, you know, there, there's an academic discussion where at the federal level, we favor home ownership. Uh, we, we allow deductions for home interest. Uh, we don't charge capital gains taxes on houses. Uh, we, of course, the property tax that we pay is deductible. Uh, and for economists, even, we, we make this argument about imputed rents. And here, the idea is if you think of these two brothers again, if one of the brothers bought stocks which paid a dividend, well, that dividend would be taxable, and any capital gains you earn on those stocks would be taxable. And of course, for housing, you, you also buy an asset that also provides a stream of services to you if you, you live there, right? It's sort of the rental value of that house. Uh, and of course, we, we wouldn't tax any of that. Uh, so at the, at the federal level, there, there's this, this argument that housing is treated more beneficially, right, than, than, than other ways of investing uh, uh, money and that that can create distortion. And the last piece I think is important to think about at the state level is deductibility on, on federal tax returns. So if a, if, if a tax, you can write it off on your federal return, well that makes, it sets up a system where the federal government essentially is sharing some of the burden of that tax. Uh, and I, I went to the Congressional Budget Office because they have a recent study on this and just had a had a look at some of the data, uh, and I know these are a little uh, hard to read. This is revenue shares for state governments, and I forgot to put in the, the summary one. But you can see sort of New Hampshire's on there, Massachusetts, uh, a, a couple of our bordering states, and the property tax for, for New Hampshire uh, is is much higher share of our source of state state uh, uh, funds than than any any nearby state. Vermont is, is is an exception. The data that I've, I've seen, I think the CBO might be off, that, that this 11% is a little small. Uh, and <clears throat> what this means is that uh, and we don't rely on a sales or an income tax. And what this means is that besides the property tax, we don't have really any, any deductions at this, at the, uh, on our federal tax returns. And so we're, we're not really imposing a system that shares this burden with, with the federal government or that uh, we, we end up paying higher taxes on our federal returns than similar uh, 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 people in other states would, right? And that's what that, uh, that, that last circle I circled there on the, on the right-hand side. The proportion of the revenues that's, that's, that's deductible or potentially deductible is about 12% in New Hampshire. And you can see in other states it's typically sort of 20-25%. Uh, so we're, we're getting our sources uh, besides the property tax from, from from things that aren't deductible. At the local level, this will be just reversed. We're so reliant at the local level, and that's the next uh, 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 slide on the property tax. You can see here, and this will this sort of will be reflected in these in these pillars you see uh, behind here. That the 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 nationwide average, I think, was about 35, 36 percent in in New Hampshire. 77 percent of local revenues comes from from property tax. Uh, and so we look good on this sort of this deductibility metric for, for, for uh, uh, local taxes. But it's something to think about if you, if, if you want to argue that you want to do something else, is does this something else create something that we can at least share with the federal government where we can, we can take those expenses and deduct them on individual returns and so put less of a burden on, on New Hampshire citizens uh, for the same amount of revenue generation. Uh, what the, uh, I'll, I'll leave it. So the question is, what are the non-tax sources? I think it, these are uh, local governments, and so I think this is, uh, in, in most states, sort of revenues coming from the state to the locality. And in New Hampshire, we don't do much of that. So it's a, it's a really low sum, whereas in other states, I think this is higher. I think that's what they're doing. Like fees. So for example, when you register your car, mm -hmm. And you pay, you know, a certain amount to the state, a certain amount to the town, and various sundry other fees. 
So that's it for me. So as, as an economist, I'm thinking about the, the efficiency criteria. Does it, does it tax or an alternative create new distortions? And I'm thinking about the equity criteria. And the equity, I'm thinking both about this horizontal and this vertical, about whether you treat similar treat people similarly and whether uh, there is some, some, some thought given to sort of ability to pay and how tax system is, is constructed. Okay.